Patrick woke up to sunlight greeting him through the open blinds. The sounds of the winter morning in full swing told him that the hour was too late. Voices of neighbors removing snow, cars driving on a slushy road, even the wind seemed to be full of activity. Since becoming sober, Patrick has become accustomed to rising before the sun to greet the world. It strangely reminded him of the days lost to alcoholism. Another familiar sensation, a hangover. He clearly had too much to drink last night. He groaned, trying to lift his head from the pillow which he immediately regretted. The pulsation in his skull punished him and reminded him that the softness of the pillow was his friend. He obeyed and plunged even deeper into her. Five more minutes, he lied to himself, closing his eyes. He was almost falling asleep when he felt the bed next to him move. A rustle under the blanket he was lying under alarmed him. He opened his eyes just in time to see a slender arm wrapped around his torso. Throwing off the blankets, Patrick was shocked to the core. Good morning, Patty, Kendra said with a yawn, her eyes fluttering open. Oh, shit. He finally had the strength to raise his head. A quick scan of the room revealed that he was not sleeping in his own bed. And not in your room. If he hadn't had such a hangover, he would have collected all the evidence much earlier. This king-size bed is too soft to be his. The plump pillow he slept on seemed too high quality for what he had bought. Plus, it smelled like lavender. His house smelled of sweat. Voices of neighbors shuffling with a shovel. He lives in an apartment building. The neighbors don't remove the snow. They complain about this to the managers of the complex. And yet, there was a certain familiarity in this unfamiliar bedroom. He spent years in this room. I remembered the day I bought this bed. These pillows. These curtains. This is a blanket. He was in his old bedroom, which he shared with his wife. Kendra? Yes? What the hell is going on? She chuckled at the question, gently stroking his chest with her hand. What do you mean? What the hell is going on? What does it look like? We are waking up. Patrick grabbed her hand and pulled her to him so that she would stop stroking him. The soft movements made his body react, whether he wanted it to or not. Why do we wake up in the same bed? He asked, his tone serious. Oh, it's simple, she said with a devilish grin. Of course, because we had sex. Wait, what? She giggled, as if his panicked question didn't bother her at all. Her arms rose casually above her head as she stretched. Her legs stretched out in the opposite direction. Patrick couldn't help but run his eyes down her legs. Her braless breasts pressed against the thin material of her T-shirt. Having finished stretching, she sat on her side, resting her head on her hand and resting her elbow on the mattress. She looked like she was posing for a painting. Still beautiful, even after all these years. Even with her hair tousled and no makeup on her face, she was the most beautiful woman who had ever allowed him to take off her clothes. Familiar feelings stirred within him. He mentally suppressed them. He needed answers, and to get them he couldn't get excited. Taking on a serious tone again, he asked, So you're saying we had sex? Yes, I do not believe in this. Believe me, she said, rolling away from him. The roll took her straight to the edge of the bed, where she gracefully slid out from under the covers. Now Patrick had a full view of his almost naked wife. She was wearing only a thin t-shirt and panties. What's worse, she wasn't at all ashamed of it. She didn't try to cover herself. She didn't look embarrassed. In fact, she was grinning cheerfully, as if his confusion was funny. I warned you not to drink so much, she said, putting her hands on her hips to playfully reproach him. You really don't remember what we did last night? All the things I let your slutty ass do to me? Huh? She giggled and shook her head before continuing. I'm not complaining, but you were never like this when we were together. Oh, shit, Patrick thought. She's not kidding. I think I actually had my wife last night. While Kendra laughed at how much Patrick was panicking, his mind was racing against time. He desperately rewinded his memory, trying to find an explanation. The New Year's Eve party images started out bright and cheerful. He remembered meeting Dave and Charlotte. I drank a little. 
I saw my rejected wife there flirting with some idiot. I drank more. I danced with a beautiful woman, quarreled with Kendra, made peace with Kendra. I drank more. Kiss at midnight. From that point on, things got a little hazy. Last night was a winner for Patrick. On New Year's Eve 2020, Patrick sat on the floor of his living room, alone and drunk. The only thing he thought about was how best he could die. He had nothing to live for. That's what he thought. He spent 2021 getting out of the hole in which he lived. Death of a brother. Death of marriage. The death of the safe and secure life of the average American. In 2020, he had to mourn these deaths. In 2021, he had to move on. But 2022 was a revelation for him. He saw not only how much life there was in himself, but also how much life he brought into the world around him. He climbed out of the hole of the depths of his despair in which he lived and forced himself to live. Not just to be alive, but to live. Find a hobby. Make new friends. Spend time with your daughter. Doing more than just slaving away at a job you can barely stand. For the first time in years, Patrick felt no ambivalence about attending a meeting where his estranged wife would be present. I didn't feel a cramp in my stomach thinking about meeting her. That is, until I saw her. If God existed, Kendra would be an ugly hag that he could quickly forget. He could be sure that she would never find love with another man and would spend the rest of her days alone and longing for him. Why does she always light up the room with her smile? Why does her laugh make you laugh? Why is she still the most beautiful woman Patrick has ever seen? The big question is why didn't their breakup affect her as much as it did him? When he caught her cheating, his world came crashing down. And then he himself collapsed. I started drinking more, stopped playing sports. He barricaded himself from the whole world, leaving his miserable apartment only to work. And she? She is thriving. As a single woman, she spread her phoenix wings and took flight. I went on dates with my new boyfriend to art museums, went on fun short weekends, and had mind-blowing sex. She smiled more, cried less, and truly seemed like a happier woman. And tonight was no different. Her tight cocktail dress accentuated her curves, the heels showed off her slender legs, they emphasized how beautifully she was dressed without seeming like an advertisement. How she managed to maintain such a figure when she is already approaching 40 is a miracle that only fairy godmothers are capable of. It's no surprise that she was able to replace him with a man almost 10 years younger than herself. The truth is that Kendra will only be single as long as she wants to be. Even now, when she's standing in the corner drinking champagne, there's some guy there taking his chance. Patrick saw this. He doesn't need to hear what they're talking about to know they're not talking about the weather. He looked at her, smiled at her, leaned closer, speaking to initiate contact. It is obvious. She didn't even need to make an effort. All she could do was stand, smile, and watch as all the bees flocked to her in the hope of pollinating her flower. But you know what? He came to terms with it. I had to. If he based his happiness on whether she suffered the consequences of breaking his heart in the most cruel way, he would remain attached to her forever. Because frankly, there is no fate that can compare with what he had to endure. Patrick's thoughts were interrupted by a voice from his left. Holy crap! Are my eyes deceiving me? He heard the words of his friend Dave. Dave and his wife Charlotte were the couple hosting the party. Patrick turned just in time to see Dave slowly and dramatically approach him. He looked like he was approaching a rare animal that he didn't want to spook. Dave, Patrick said, nodding his head. St. Patrick, are you really here at my party in the flesh? Has he finally decided to make us mere mortals happy with his presence? You're an idiot. You just saw me last week, Patrick said, and a couple of friends laughed. The brotherly handshake between them turned into a tight hug. Yes, but it was accidental. I just happened to run into you at the gym. This time you came to me on purpose. Doesn't matter. I'm touched, Dave said, maintaining his cheerful, jokey manner. I feel special that you considered my party worthy enough for your highness to attend. Patrick nudged him lightly before saying, Shut up and take me to the drinks. Dave's welcome was more than just Patrick's welcome to his first party in forever. 
it also announced its presence to Kendra. Right now, the man next to her had been working on her since she came in almost an hour ago. He was charming, funny, handsome, and Kendra was flattered by his attention. But then she heard Patrick's name. At first, she thought her ears were wrong. Taking a quick look around the room, she found her estranged husband laughing and joking with Dave. All interest in the man to her right evaporated. Patrick looked really good. Lately, every time she saw him, she felt... She felt like she was seeing a man she had met for the first time. He stood at full height. He was confident, laughed and smiled more often. He no longer hid in his apartment, hiding from the whole world. He became comfortable appearing in public. This Patrick was not the Patrick she was used to. He gave up life, gave up happiness. He abandoned the people who loved him, refused her. That Patrick suffered alone in his tiny hell between his ears. But he was changing. Kendra saw it. Every meeting with him showed how much he was changing. At first, she suspected that these changes in him were temporary, that this was his attempt to impress her. But it became obvious that his changes had nothing to do with her. Now he was rock climbing. I rode a bike and did martial arts. I went to the gym and on dates. That last one was hard for Kendra to swallow. At first, she didn't know he was seeing other women. He didn't tell her anything about his life. Everything she learned about him had to be extracted from their daughter Jessie through high-level interrogation. All she knew was that he was becoming more and more unavailable. Previously, as soon as she had problems with the house, he immediately rushed to solve them. It didn't matter when she called him or how minor the problem was. And to be honest, most of the problems were just a subtle reason to see his face because she missed him. But lately he's been... busy. Was the jealousy she felt knowing he was dating hypocritical? Does she have the right to feel a little annoyed that he is dating other women while she is more than available? Her affair lasted for more than a year and a half. It was hard to fire Sean, but once she did, it was like the fog lifted. Once upon a time, she thought she was in love with this man. They often talked about how their lives would be if she actually left Patrick to be with him. They would buy a house together with a big backyard. We would like to adopt a Siberian husky into our family. They filled their new home with art and modern furniture. She, Sean, and Jesse would go on a family vacation. They would tell all their friends the sanitized story of how they met. They would spend their nights in each other's arms, having sex until they lost consciousness in post-coital bliss. Sounds like heaven. But this was not paradise. A fantasy, far from reality. In the real world, Kendra is married to a man whom she still loves. She has a daughter who will never accept Sean as a father. She has family and friends who are disappointed with the choices she made. She has a sense of guilt for the lives she has changed. And because of all this, she cried every night. Could you excuse me, Barry? Kendra said, interrupting the man who was desperately trying to charm her. I saw someone I needed to say hello to. Looking slightly depressed, Barry said, My name is Brent. Huh? Brent, he repeated, although she was clearly distracted and barely paying attention to him. My name is Brent. Smiling sweetly, Kendra replied, Well, of course. With that, she left, making her way through the guests. By this time, Patrick and Dave had already left the living room, so he had to wait a bit search. Finally, she caught up with him in the kitchen, where he was getting a drink. You, Patrick noticed her approach with his bare eyes. Part of him was surprised that she had abandoned her suitor to talk to him. The other part was expecting this. Hello, Patty, she said sweetly. Hello, Ken. Dave felt it would be a good idea to retire gracefully. Patting Patrick on the shoulder encouragingly, he said, I, uh, I'll go look for Charlotte. Before Patrick could protest, Dave was already gone. The two of them stood together for a while, saying nothing. Finally, Kendra broke their silence. I didn't know you'd be here tonight. Where's Jesse? My parents. They insisted that I drop her off and go have some fun. She nodded in agreement with his parents. Fine. It's nice to see you in the company of people, she said seriously. But this statement soon left her mouth sour. As Patrick took a sip of his beer, worry lines appeared on Kendra's forehead. 
she mentally pictured all the time she had seen him drunk in the past. How he walks around in a sullen state, angry at the whole world. And then she saw him sitting alone in his living room, almost ready to end his life. Are you sure you should drink? Didn't you go to Alcoholics Anonymous after, you know? You mean after I tried to commit suicide? The cavalier manner in which he spoke about something so terrible took her by surprise. He said it like it was a joke. As if almost ending his life wasn't the worst thing he could have done to her and Jesse. It's not funny, she said, her tone deadly serious. I'm not laughing. When he wanted to take a sip from his mug, she grabbed his wrist. Seriously, shouldn't you abstain from drinking? Ken, I'm fine. Patrick said, his voice full of irritation. It's a party. I don't need you to babysit me. Yes, but... Don't you have a boyfriend to have fun? He spat, interrupting her. Why did you even come here for me? We both know that you enjoy the company of other men. He immediately regretted those words as soon as they left his mouth. They were intentionally offensive and did their job. He expected her to yell at him and maybe throw her drink in his face. Call him an asshole maybe even slap him in the face. But she didn't do any of this. Instead, he saw tears of resentment frozen in her eyes. Then, without a word, she turned on her heel and quickly walked away, leaving Patrick with the sound of shoes clicking on the tile floor. Crap. Patrick paused to calm down and went to find her to apologize. But I didn't see her anywhere. Even found the guy she was talking to before. Unfortunately, she wasn't with him either. He moved on to another woman with whom he had a better chance. She was a little drunk and sexier than Kendra. She probably left. Sighing, he took out his phone and texted her. The only response I received was silence. Knowing her well, he knew she would probably be angry with him for the rest of the night. Most likely, he will not receive an answer until tomorrow. He could forget about it and focus on having fun. After all, this is the first party he's been to in a while. So he did. He didn't know that Kendra never left. She just went into one of the bathrooms to cry. She specifically chose the bathroom in the master bedroom because she knew no one would disturb her there. Why is he such an ass? Why treat her like this when she's only worried about his health? It seemed like the old Patrick was still there. He could change his appearance, find new hobbies, start dating girlfriends but at the end of the day, he was still the same old asshole. The phone buzzed in her purse. Taking it, she saw that it was a message from Patrick. Two words, nothing else. I'm sorry, fuck him, to hell with it. He seemed determined to punish her forever. She spent more than a year apologizing to him for what she did, and she didn't know how many more apologies he would need before he started to forgive her. But you know what? He owes her an apology too. Yes, she had an affair. This is a huge mistake, the worst of her life. Ever since she found out about his suicide attempt, she has been faced with a tsunami of guilt. She finally realized the price of her selfishness. Patrick thinks she got away with it, but that couldn't be further from the truth. She sees him around every corner, hears his voice in the empty corridors. She dreams that he is in bed with her, but when she wakes up, she finds his place empty. Her actions are not free. The price of her infidelity is high. It cost her her family. Worth a husband. Worth their daughter's respect. But most importantly, she almost cost Patrick his life. No matter what happened, no matter how angry he was with her, she could not forget about him. There was a voice inside her that forced her to hold on to him, even if he himself wanted to free himself. Perhaps it is a feeling of guilt. Maybe it's love. Maybe a perverted mixture of both. She did not know. Her therapist had been trying to help her figure this out for months. All she knows is that Patrick is still inside her, even if she's not inside him. She must take responsibility for this. And she did it. Many times. But her therapist is right about one thing. Although cheating is very harmful, it is not the only end of all sin. She does not justify the fact that he is also to blame for the destruction of their marriage. Emotionally, he was the one who abandoned her long before she even started thinking about another man. Stopped being her partner. It doesn't justify what she did, 
but her actions don't justify him either. They both screwed up, but it seems she was the only one who admitted her guilt. Patrick practically gave himself free reign due to the fact that it was she who cheated on him. She wiped the tears from her face and looked into the mirror over the sink. God, she looks terrible. The makeup is completely ruined. Red, swollen eyes. Face stained with tears. She looks exactly the way she feels. Rummaging through her purse, she found everything she needed to make herself look decent. In just ten minutes, she wiped off the face of the earth, that crying woman who first looked at her and was stunning again. She joined the party again, but first went into the kitchen to grab another flute of champagne. Then she headed to the living room, where everyone else was. And then I saw it. Patrick, dancing with another woman. Younger, probably around 25. What the heck? Yes, she knew Patrick went on dates. He might have gotten laid a couple of times, although Kendra hated the idea. But the fact that right before her eyes, he was attacking some young slut as if he were 20 damn years old outraged her to the core. Kendra was stylish. She was not the kind of woman who would fight over a man, especially one with a child. It was the men who fought over her. Patrick didn't even notice that he was being watched. When he returned to the party for drinks, a woman he knew struck up a conversation with him. He knew her from his tour group. They talked from time to time, but never for long. Tonight, everything changed. She always thought Patrick was cute for an older man. The gray in his dark hair made him look like a sexy professor. This led to them both laughing and him asking her to dance. In truth, he didn't wobble and swivel his hips. However, he danced close to her so close that he could smell her hair. While Kendra stood there fuming, Charlotte approached her from behind. She and her husband, Dave, had known Patrick and Kendra for several years. They knew them as a couple and as separate people. Witnessed Patrick's mental breakdown, Kendra's infidelity, and their marital turmoil. Hey, girl, Charlotte said, gently touching Kendra on the shoulder. She couldn't help the hint of sympathy in her voice because she saw where Kendra was looking and knew how she felt. Hi, Kendra replied, not taking her eyes off the scene in front of her. Pointing to the woman Patrick was dancing with, she asked, Who is she? You remember Patrice, don't you? She works with me. I introduced you when you came to pick me up one day. No. I don't remember, Kendra answered icily. Taking a sip from her glass, she added, You should probably check her papers. You don't want to get arrested for drugging a minor. Maybe buy her some juice or something. Charlotte couldn't help but laugh. Don't be petty, she warned, unable to hide her amusement. I just asked. Charlotte pulled Kendra away from watching Patrick's fun. There was no point in standing there and suffering. Eventually, Patrick realized that Kendra had not left. I saw her as I walked past the French doors leading to the balcony. She was outside, standing in the cold night, turned away from him and looking at the backyard. Seeing his chance to offer a sincere apology, he approached her. Hi, he said, his voice deep but quiet. She glanced at him briefly but did not return the greeting. Sighing, he said, Look, about what I said earlier, did you send your little girlfriend home? She interrupted. Huh? Your young dance partner. Patrick shrugged. No. She just went for a drink. Kendra chuckled mockingly. I think Charlotte might have some Capri Suns in her fridge. It took him a second, but he had to stop himself from bursting out laughing. Wait a minute. Are you jealous? He asked with a grin. This time she was looking directly at him, and that smug grin and that devilish look in his eyes. Doesn't matter. He had to admit, her jealousy made him feel good. He didn't think she could feel such emotions, at least towards him. He reached out and touched her shoulder, half expecting her to recoil from his touch, but she didn't. Can we declare a truce? He asked sincerely. I behaved like an ass and I realized it. I had no right to lash out at you when you were only worried about me. Sorry. Kendra rolled her eyes and pouted, but nodded after a second. I didn't want to quarrel with him, but still... She wanted to hit him on the chest. However, immediately after that, she clung to him 
and pressed her forehead to his shoulder. He wrapped his arms around her and hugged her. They returned to the party, this time together. Then things got a little foggy. There was also alcohol. So many. There were games. Kendra and Patrick teamed up like old times. There was laughter. There was dancing. It was a lot of fun. And then midnight came. This countdown. They looked at each other, shouting in unison with the group, Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. With that, they kissed. They kissed long and passionately. They kissed as if they had been denying this to each other all their lives. They kissed as if it was their last moment on earth. It seemed like they kissed for hours. And then, and then, he woke up in bed with his wife. How did I end up here? I don't remember leaving the party, Patrick said. Looking around his old bedroom, I called us an Uber. We were both too drunk to drive. He asked, pointing at her, but not too drunk to have sex. She giggled, then looked down at his blanket-covered manhood. No, you were more than ready for this, Ken. Patty, relax, she said, her tone less playful. I'm making fun of you. There was nothing. What? She shrugged. We didn't have sex. We took Uber here because it was easier. Jesse stayed with your parents, so there was no need for you to rush home. The plan was to return to Charlotte together in the morning and pick up our cars. Still confused, he asked, but why are we almost naked? Why did they sleep in the same bed? Because you threw up on us, she said, shaking her head as if she was amused by his antics. I warned you not to drink so much. Looking back, he remembered this. He remembered her high-pitched squeal of disgust when he vomited beer in her direction. So, after that? She sighed and then finished his sentence. After that, we both fell into bed and fell asleep. That's all. Is it true? She snorted with laughter. Do you really think I have to resort to raping men to get sex? Patrick couldn't help the deep sigh of relief that escaped him. But to be honest, part of him was disappointed. I think not, he said, shrugging his shoulders. Seeing his relief that they didn't have sex, Kendra felt a little sad. This is evidence of how far they have grown apart from each other. Let's get up, she said, shaking off the feeling. She grabbed the blankets and quickly pulled them off, leaving him naked on the bed. We need to take a shower so we can go out. Patrick nodded in agreement but remained seated. They looked at each other longingly. Then, with a sigh, Patrick got out of bed and headed to the shower. Kendra watched him disappear into the bathroom. It looked so natural, as if this scene was supposed to happen here. She lied and said nothing happened between them. No, they didn't have sex. But he grabbed her and Hugh get her all night. Yes, it was more muscle memory than anything else. But they lay together, their bodies touching. She listened to him snore softly in her ear until she too fell asleep. It was right. Her place is in his arms. His place is in her bed. He was too stupid to understand it, and so was she. With that, she made her decision. Grabbing the hem of the T-shirt, she lifted it up and pulled it over her head. She also hooked her thumbs into the waistband of her panties and pulled them off her hips to the floor. Hey, move over she said with a sly smile, appearing in the bathroom completely naked. Patrick's shocked expression was almost comical. He couldn't stop himself from looking up and down the length of her body. Yes, he saw his wife naked many times, but it seemed like a lifetime ago, and now it was as if he was seeing her for the first time. Without clothes, Kendra was not the ideal goddess she appeared to the world to be. Yes, she is beautiful, but she is only human. She has human flaws. This cellulite is on the butt. Excessive breast sagging. Small pouch on the stomach. Wrinkles around the edges of the eyes. But this was the part she wanted Patrick to see. I wanted to be vulnerable with him. She wanted him to see her as she was. She didn't want to be some kind of unattainable goddess for him. She wanted to become his wife again, and she was tired of playing this game that they played together. Unable to speak, he granted her wish 
and made room for her. She stepped towards him, taking a seat directly under the shower head, just like she always did in the past when they showered together. She didn't seduce him, didn't try to excite, and she simply began to wash herself, standing with her back to him, as she would have done if he had not been there. Patrick openly admired his wife. I watched the water cascade down her back, over her butt, over her thighs, and into the drain on the floor. I watched her lather herself up and let the streams of water wash everything away. Having finished washing, she turned to face him. Their eyes met. Finally, she said, When we finally have sex, you won't have to wonder if you did it. You will know this, and I won't have to lure you into my bed. You will come voluntarily and beg me for it. A strange expression appeared on his face. It wasn't playful or lustful like it should have been after such a statement. It was hunted. And that was the whole point. That look, as if he had seen a ghost, was almost the same as if it was Sean in the shower with the two of them. As much as Kendra didn't want it, her actions with the younger man forever tainted whatever she and Patrick might have had. Patrick needed time. A lot of time. But the fact that he had not yet filed for divorce gave her hope. Kendra leaned over and kissed him. Nothing romantic, just a soft kiss. Smiling sadly, she said, If you ever decide to come back to me, Patty, I will be waiting for you. Just know that I'm sorry for what I did to you and that I love you. With these words, she left the shower, leaving him alone with his thoughts. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.